call this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this uh, August 21st at 5 p.m. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, J.T. Taylor to do the prayer for us, and then uh, John Combs is going to do the uh, Pledge of Flag for us. If you would, just bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you, Father, again for this beautiful day, Lord, that you kill us. We thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity to stand beside in this physical court tonight, Lord, and be part of it. We thank you, Father, for each one that's come out to participate with us. We ask you, Lord, to let this be done in decency and order, Lord, the way that you would have it. We just like to give you the praise, Lord, tonight. Give you the glory for all things. Because, Lord, we know tonight without you we can do nothing at all. So we thank you for all the things that you do. We ask you to bless tonight, help us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> you all join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank of the July 24th meeting. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Are there any discussions, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including a like this. Uh, need a motion to approve. So, motion to Larry Count. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion? Bring that roll call. Hang on, just, just one second. Okay. Okay. Construction to do the work in the holding sale for the community center here. Uh, and I, I don't, we usually don't, but we're going to approve a contract for them. Well, um, and I did go ahead and put that on that late list. I just wanted authorization to write the three checks. The contract states they will get the first draw when they begin the project, the second draw upon 50% completion, and the final draw upon completion of the project. And I'm going to be out the next couple of weeks, so I wanted to have these checks ready for them. And this was, I, uh, this is uh, paid for, it comes from the court's money. Yes. So I need a motion to approve that. It'll come out there, buddy. It comes out, yeah. Well, through us. AMC is paying us back directly. Where does the run through? Where does the pass through? Yeah, pass through, run through, yeah. That's what I read. I'll make a motion. 
motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second, Second by Jason Bullock. The uh, $17,000, what are they doing? They had to um, do the bathrooms and the holding cells, and then they're making them prison <coughs> standards. I can't talk right now. Uh, right now, there's just a ceramic steel, toilet. So okay. um, <coughs> they're like yeah. the ones they have in prisons. Stainless steel, all one unit. They had to run pipes from the ground up to the third floor. <coughs> yeah. So there wasn't already bathrooms in it? Yes, yeah, they, they were forcing like a. They had to run pipes too? Those. It's one piece, it's all one unit, the sink and the commode and everything, and it had to have a larger pot. $17,000? Yeah. But AOC is paying for that. That's yeah, not out of our budget. It really indirectly comes some of our money from AOC. <coughs> I just kind of curious is how many, how many commodes are they buying? It's two. Two commodes? I think the commodes. We said two, <coughs> put two commodes in and one pipe, $17,000. Yeah. Has to beat to their standards. Yeah. And I think the commodes were quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Evidently. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess we'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Before you have the treasurer's July uh, report, uh, neither Holly acknowledged that she gave it to us. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion or questions for the treasurer? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like Sam. Okay. Uh, it's <coughs> Uh, Y'all have a copy of Bess's report. So, like, do it the same way, subject to audit. Make so, a motion to acknowledge it. We got motion by, Barnes. Motion by uh, Joe Barnes. Second. Second by Sam Small to acknowledge the receipt of Bess Ralph's uh, uh, financial report. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like Sam. Motion carried. I'll make a motion to accept the sheriff's quarterly report. We <laughs> Motion for Jason Bullock. I'll second. Sam. Second for Sam Small. Is there any discussion? Or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like Sam? That motion carries. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We've got to set the tax rates for the county. Hey, uh, Motion by Larry Cam to accept the second. Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, that's to set the rate at point zero 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 six three uh, on motor vehicles and the same on watercraft. So that's pretty low. So all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Now let's look at the real estate. Our two choices is compensation rate or four percent. Yeah, real in person. Yeah, I'll uh, entertain a motion at the uh, compensation rate. Motion by Larry Camp for compensation rate. Second by Sam Small. 
Any discussion? Just note that is the lower rate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did not take an increase. Uh, if we had it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been very much. Anyway. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Is Rip here? Did you do the personal? We did. We did first. We did. We did. We did. No, we that did was the real. motor. That was the. We did the yeah. motor and the first. We, we only had the two listed on the agenda, no, though. We did. We did. That one and that one, and then we did the together. Yeah, the real and the personal together, and then yeah. the motor. Yeah. Okay. And for the record, um, the tax rate yeah. was not raised. So uh, uh, we had a lot of activity on our assessments. The assessments on the real property went way up uh, a whole lot. So that would have been a real good thing. But the unmined minerals that was taxable went way down in their assessment. So they sort of weighed each other out. <laughs> Here, but I, I'll, I'll, it's for the, the the court to decide if you want to go ahead and approve RIP's policies and procedures. Or no, no changes have been made. No, with no changes from, from last year. I'll make a motion. Motion to Joe Barnes. Second. Second by Larry Camp. Is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The uh, motion carries. Uh, Rip, we've done yours without you, but we'll need a copy of it. There wasn't any changes, right? Rip. Hey, Rip. Yeah. There wasn't any changes, right? No changes. Okay. Well, I didn't even see Rip back there. Well, he just he walked came in, in right as is. <laughs> he came in right after we voted. Uh, good, sir. Good speech. Next, uh, I want to introduce to the court uh, members of our honor guard. They'll make a little talk to us. Uh, John Toms, J.T. Taylor, Barbie, Barbara Bays, Dave Crink. James Barbie, right? It took me a second, but I got it. Uh, so, uh, you're up. Judge, thank you. Uh, for this opportunity. Gentlemen, thank you for allowing us to be here. I want to start with when the Honor Guard was formed. This was in year 2003. Four men gathered at the post to talk about burial honors for veterans, what they could do to help the families and give honor to those that have passed on. That was for Ohio County only. The Honor Guard was formed and named PFC Wesley Phelps Memorial Honor Guard in honor of World War II Marine PFC Wesley Phelps of Rosine, who was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions. The Honor Guard has formed, performed more than 864 funerals. These honors were given. Since its creation, we've carried the colors in parades, present presentation of the colors, Veterans Day, and other Veterans Day ceremonies. That's what we've been. The Honor Guard is a small number of men, mostly 20 of us. Not all of those are active every time we're called to a funeral, but uh, we, we sure try. We touch a lot of people's hearts by our actions, and we do it with honor and dedication, and we don't receive anything for that. A lot of times, the don't receive even a thank you. Some people do give thanks and are grateful that of the service that we provide. 
but in starting out, we started with four people who had a dream, of, and David, you were one of them. You were one of them. That brought this honor guard to what we are today. Now, I came before because we need a vehicle. We need a new vehicle. Our van that we have is 2004, 226,000 miles on it, and it has required maintenance. We were given a van, minibus van, by Dogwood Estates, and it is a, it's a good, good vehicle. Uh, we have converted the lift door in it to house our gun rack for the carrying the rifles, and there's ample space in it. Uh, I believe Orville has uh, talked about a couple more different types. One van that has a raised roof. Now it's easier to get in and out if there is a raised roof, such as the mini bus, and that's what I'm asking today is help from this court to help us buy a new vehicle. Now what we've looked at, some we could get that's got 10,000 miles on it, some that have 15,000 miles on it, that would have a new vehicle warranty. We're looking into that. So uh, we're asking the court for help. In getting a new vehicle. John, I certainly appreciate what you guys have done. I know uh, I've been to more than several funerals, more than I want to remember, but uh, you guys do a great job. I know it's all volunteer and, and uh, certainly appreciate it on this end. And if I may say so, and this I'm only speaking for myself, not to any of the rest of the members of the court, but uh, as far as out of my discretionary money, I'd be more than happy to give you a thousand dollars out of my place. I'll add another thousand. I'll do a thousand. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I do. I'd already gave 500 that we're voting on tonight, but I'll get 500. Yeah, I know, and I told them I thought it was, but I'll, I'll bump mine up to that too. Right. So that gives you a total of. Yeah, because we already, we well, already had 500. That gives you a total of $6,000 from the court. Judge, thank you. Members of the court, thank you. Thank you very much. What was the what, how much is the total? price that you was getting on the Well, the, the raised top van is $24,000. Now, the minibus van goes up to $45,000. Yeah. Now, we're going to raise funds until the first week of October. And at that time, we'll say, okay, we're going to have to go more or we've got enough to do the, the purchase. But I'm going to take what we have the information up to the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs in Frankfurt. At their trust fund, we uh, we will probably be able to uh, get another grant. So, uh, you think, Ann, we need a, a motion on that since we've got this all said it, and you know where it's, where it's coming from, but don't you think we need to make a motion that we contribute to the 6,000? Well, and before we do it, let me ask you, since me and Jason have done got it and voted on it, give me 500. We just write another check for 500? Uh, I guess the question is, Dustin, I'm understanding he's not going to need the money until they actually get ready to purchase it, or we're well, needing that money now? We, we need it now, and I use for it grant. for uh, wager it against the amount that uh, we can borrow or give, get given to us <coughs> in the trust fund. From the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. Since, since, since there's uh, thousands of us already on bills and claims, 500 from each one then, we'll make the motion for 5,000. 5, Any motions by Larry Cam? Second. Second by Larry Morphew. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Opposed, care. Judge, we thank you all. Well, we want to thank you guys. Thank we you. really appreciate what you do. Thank you. You guys are like the volunteer farming. It's just like it says on farming. It's volunteer. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, it sure is. You know, I was in the funeral business 13 years ago, and I was telling them before that I remember just when they first sent the military, and they would send two people, which was nice. They would send them, and they would play with the box there, and it was 
but I remember when you guys started, and it, it stepped up big time. And, and uh, then I remember when you got the guns, because it was at Mr. Martin's uh, funeral there at Moamps. So I can't remember his first name, but it was, he used to own Moamps, and it's just, you guys really always did a nice job. When we started, there was just one county. Mm -hmm. well, yes. There's 14 counties that ask our services. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we're really uh, we're really proud of our honor guard and all of our veterans organizations that make it up. Um, at one time or other, all of the veterans groups in the county have assisted some way with the honor guard. I believe. I know the initial startup cost came from all four organizations. Uh, I know probably the AMBEPS and BFW have put most of it since then, but at one time they all all contributed. And I think it would be very appropriate to approach the others, not rep those groups that's not directly represented here, and ask for help on this as well. I'm not going to name, but I have no one of those organizations got some money. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to give, uh, introduce to you uh, Richard Boone. Uh, he's with. Uh, Avenue Insights and Analytics, and he wants to help us uh, collect occupational taxes and uh, try to. We have a really, really, really long agenda, so oh, let's be quick. You, sorry, you'll sorry. have their attention for three, three to five minutes. Okay, I'll take you loose. I appreciate it. Thanks, Judge. Thanks, Manager. It's a tough act to follow. Uh, so I had a chance to meet with Charlotte and Judge uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm with Avenue Insights, as the Judge mentioned. Uh, we're a company that's been in business 40 years, um, <coughs> relatively new in Kentucky. I started with the company in June of last year, uh, and we work exclusively with cities and county governments across the country. Very narrow set of services. We do audits. We do tax administration. Uh, the purpose of, of uh, the address this evening is our discovery and recovery service on the occupational tax. Basically, we help cities and counties uh, find businesses that, that may have a footprint in a county that, that are not on the current registry. And we work directly with those businesses to bring them into compliance. On the front sheet here, I'll just go through this quickly. Um, uh, basically, what we do is we, we use data and, and analytics to uh, develop a list of businesses that we think are conducting business in the county. And we will cross-match that list with your current registry. Uh, that'll create a, a third list of what we consider leads. Uh, and essentially, we'll start a, a mail campaign to those entities uh, to verify that they are conducting business uh, within the county and not on the registry. Any letters that we send out are approved by the county. Um, we, uh, we have a company-owned U.S.-based call center in Birmingham. Uh, so these letters typically generate calls and emails. We try to take all of those if we can. You know, the counties do get calls, uh, but, but that's the purpose of, of what we do is to, to handle those calls, to answer questions. Uh, we assist with uh, the registration of the company, with invoicing, with collecting. Uh, essentially what we do is we collect uh, the, the forms, uh, make sure they're filled out correctly. We collect the checks paid in full. And then once a week, we batch all that information up and send it to the county so they can post it uh, into their system. Uh, we do this on a contingency basis. So if we, if we recover zero dollars, we're paid zero dollars. Essentially, we are paid 40% uh, on what we recover. And I want to make, make it clear that that's only on the current year and any previous tax years that we're able to collect. So moving forward, the county realizes 100% of, of the revenue from the businesses that, that we bring uh, into the system. Um, so we never guarantee that we're going to find anything. Uh, we typically do. So either we're going to find money for the county or you'll have a no-cost verification from us that your list is, is pretty good. I want to give you an example on the second page of our work in uh, Warren County. We currently have uh, 
uh, eight soon to be nine cities and counties in Kentucky under contract which just happened this year uh, Warren was the first and uh, on that second sheet you'll see that uh, we've recovered in just the first four months for them uh, it says 160,000 it's actually up to $170,000 recovered um, uh, I was there last week I met with Judge Buchanan he's very happy with with what we've done uh, the tax administrator, Stephen Kenworthy, tells me they have 700 new business registrations as a result of our work. Um, and as you can see with the, uh, the phone consultations, we're now approaching 2,000 uh, phone calls for, uh, for Warren County. So that's calls that we've taken from the taxpayer to answer questions and so forth. Um, of the so we have eight, eight contracts in Nicholas County. We've agreed to terms. They're going to get our contract with them this week. Six of the nine have uh, put this out to bid, and we've been the only uh, responder to those. Um, I know Rich Ornstein with the CACO strongly urges counties to bid this service out, and, and you know obviously we're, we're fine with that. Uh, so I will stop and, and answer any questions that, that you all might have on this. Is it 40 percent with Warren County? Yes. Okay. All, all the entities that you've mentioned, are they 40 percent? Yes. Every every contract we have in Kentucky is a 40 percent contingency. And uh, you told uh, Charlotte and I when we talked that you're talking this is only the first time recovery. If you identify new business the second year we've collected. You get it all, right? Yes. How far do you back up? Uh, typically it's five years, but we we customize that. I know one customer wanted us to go back to 15, uh, and then another asked us to go back just two years. We'd like to go back as far as we can. Our ordinance, I believe, just allows five, doesn't it, Charlotte? Did the, this one with Warren County, was that, did you back up on them, or was that just a... No, it's, that's five years. That's five years. Yes. Okay. That's the main year that you're going to see the big. Right. Yeah. Was that 170 their gross or net? That's what we've recovered for them. So, so you had a 60 after our fees taken out? After our fees. No, no, no. That's the total we've recovered. So our so then the 40 will come off that. Right. Yeah. 64,362. 68. 170. But next year, again, that's all, all, that's all theirs. Any other questions for Mr. Bunn? And let me say, too, one more thing, Judge. Uh, Warren County, you know, you think they're huge, but their annual revenue is about $3 million, which is pretty comparable to your all's annual revenue, I believe. Uh, what I'm going to do is appoint one of uh, you guys to uh, serve, serve with uh, Charlotte on looking this over and making a recommendation to the court. Which one of you would like to do that? Would like to serve with me? I can do it. Who said that, Sam? Yeah. Okay. It's Sam Small then. Because, and, and it's kind of fitting because he's actually already been helping you with the, uh, the contractors that work well, for the, work with one company. Okay. Contractors for one company. Well, appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And if you could send one of your contracts, you know, you'd like out the sure. you want or whatever yes. to Miranda so that we can maybe magistrates can see that. I'll do yeah. that. Thank you. Be good. Um, Jason, uh, are you ready to present the uh, amateur ordinance tonight? Or you need another meeting? Mr. Sinclair is probably here. Would like, Dr. Sinclair would like to speak, probably. If you want to let him go ahead and speak. Yeah, yeah but you don't have a great percent, right? For a well, that's, here's the thing. If we do a, a contract with Humane Society, that's not ready. No, I know but This is just an ordinance. It's not a contract with your Humane Society. Right. I don't mind to go ahead and do this. Well, if, I mean, if you think. If Justin, are you okay? I mean, do you think that we should wait for or do you think we should just go ahead and just pass the ordinance now because it's not a contract it's just our ordinance a uh, contract would be something we could cut one two differently do you uh, feel like the other magistrates should have an opportunity to look at the ordinance yeah. i i gave it last last meeting hmm. well, what we can do i've sent they requested me to do a contract uh, to write a contract between the 
County Humane Society, and so I've got that first draft, and I sent it out to Matt and to the Humane Society. If anybody else wants to look at it, that contract is sitting out there. They want to make some see if they want to make some revisions, uh, and, but they just got it probably Friday or something of that nature. So if you want to, there's not any urgency on the amendment of the ordinance, is there, Matt? Okay, so we can probably bring this back in September. And that'll give whoever wants an opportunity to review that contract that can. If it's okay with you, Jason, let the doctor say that's fine. Well, tonight. then can everybody Let's get a current copy for speak tonight? But make sure let everybody can copy in. Yeah, then we'll and we'll let him speak to the next yeah. meeting. But tell him what's on his mind. Excuse me, I've got a pair of records. Well, I'll personally say I'm glad the Rams up there with you guys because y'all have a lot better look than her up there. Okay? Yes. Uh, first of all, the the, uh, the committee that I was set on was actually to draft uh, some changes and try to implement some policies that would help the the animal control situation get financially solvent. Now, since that, the last meeting that I went to, the Humane Society is suddenly taking this thing over. Now, I'm personally offended. When I go to our taxpayer's animal shelter, I see a sign out there that says Humane Society of Ohio County. That is the Ohio County Animal Shelter. That is a taxpayer's facility. We have someone that's already taken over part of the policies and has actually had some of my clients not be able to take pets there because they say they're full of cats and they can't take anymore. I don't know where they come from, guys. That certainly came from none of the meetings that Jason and I were in. And I was at all of them but the last one. So yep. this is all new to me. But as a taxpayer, I think we need to, this thing needs to be run by the people that the taxpayers are paying to run it. Now, if we're going to go outsourcing that, that's simply to your discretion. Personally, I think it's a big mistake. And it's certainly new to me. I called out there to talk to the animal control officer. I had some lady answer the phone, Ohio County Humane Society. So that's not who I'm calling. I mean, these things haven't been changed or implemented, have they? Have you guys voted to have someone else take over? Uh, and I told her I wasn't talking to her because she wasn't right. she wasn't working there. But I did have that sign taken down when I was there. Well, there's still one out on the outside. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So my point about the whole thing, when we talk, we talked about the changes we can make to make this a flow-through system. These animals, if we hold them longer than a certain period of time, we're going to wind up having the same problems. You're going to have to pay the same vet bills you paid in the past. These animals need to be held. Now, we have been told through someone told me that, you know, they're trying to change this from a high-kill shelter to a no-kill shelter. Guys, that's not a high-kill shelter. In the last 10 years, we put, I don't know of any dogs we put to sleep that were adoptable. The only ones that are put down are either injured, sick, and, and aren't salvage but we, we're not putting dogs to sleep that could be adopted so let's let the rescues take care of the ones that are going out there if someone wants to build a no-kill shelter they can build it run it i don't care but our tax dollars shouldn't be supporting animals in that situation now i've had somebody say well we're raising funds and we're going to save you money well we're still paying the insurance we're paying the salaries of the people out there we're still responsible for that thing doing what it's supposed to do by law. So that's the thing that I want to address the court with because this has really come on me suddenly. I didn't know this was all happening. If the court decides they want to outsource it and make a contract with the Humane Society, that's your business. But that's not what a, I said through the committees for. There was a meeting. We had Henderson, the Henderson Community County Humane Society come and explain how they did it with Henderson County and Henderson and how they did it and you know we've not signed a contract with Humane Society are we did we let them look into it and run it now are they doing it we have let them do it are we financially it's it's greatly financially saving us I mean we're saving I mean I think three months ago we hadn't had a, a bill yet uh, turned into uh, you know so I know what you're saying, but we have to look at it. I'm looking at it from the standpoint of the taxpayer, too. We were probably going to go and spend $20,000, was it $14,000 to $20,000 over budget if we didn't do something? And at this point, not right now, it seems like we're staying under budget a lot. So, three months ago, was it? They have been helping. 
because at one time they were kicked out of there. They were, and what they're doing is our policy is we keep the animals for five days, and at that point they're not part of the county. They we just surrender them over to the Humane Society, and they pay for the expenses and take care of them. But we do keep them for five days. But at that point on, that we give them over to the Humane Society, and they do try to you know they don't want to put a bail. So right now it's run as almost like a no-kill shelter. I think donations have been up, and so has the food. So, I, like I said, I, I know, but I'm looking at it from the standpoint of saving money for the county, and it, it is greatly doing that right now, if, I, if I'm, if I'm right. Am I wrong? Um, I'm on the end. I mean, I don't see it out there, but there's no vet bills. But there's no money turned down. Well, that's because they're not cooperating with any veterinarians in the county. And you can't run a shelter without running into some veterinary care at some point in time. And if you keep those animals in that facility, the way I understood this to work, those animals are going to be removed from that facility. Because the majority of the vet bills that you guys have been paying have been for animals that were at the shelter long enough to get sick. They shouldn't be there long enough to get sick. If they're there five days, they're not going to have time to get sick. Then they need to be moved out of the shelter into a rescue. Or get out of the shelter traditionally and put them to sleep. We haven't had to do that for a long time. But now we're in a situation where we're accumulating animals up there. And sooner or later, you're going to break the disease. That's just the way it works. It's impossible to totally fill the shelter with cats and at some point in time, them not get sick. I mean, it's just going to happen. Well, right now what they're doing is, you said, that as far as not taking a cat, there's a waiting list. If they'll say, we're not, we're full with the cats, but give us your number, we'll call you, and when we get a spot. That doesn't apply with our ordinance. So. See, we're, we're, we're letting them mandate the policy of the, of the shelter. What they're saying is, well, we're going to put you on wait list. That is a taxpayer's facility that should be accessible to the taxpayer at any time. The reason it's not accessible for them to take cats out there is because they're keeping cats, quote unquote, they're responsible, in the taxpayer's shelter. If they want to do that, get their own shelter, take those cats out, so the taxpayer can use the shelter they pay for. You see my point? The, animal, the Humane Society is keeping the animals so responsible for at our shelter. If they want to keep them, that's fine. Put them in their own shelter. But they're keeping but they're them in their own facilities. From them. What? They're paying the expenses on the animals. That they're, they're, they're paying, Jason, but they're denying, they're, they're, the, they're not denying the next taxpayer the opportunity to use that facility. Now, theoretically, what happens if the shelter gets full of animals? Well, right now, they're, uh, they haven't had, but the, the well, cats there has been. Well, right, cats they already, well, say they are not. Mm -hmm. What are the people going to do? They're not going to be able to use the taxpayer's facility until one of those animals is either adopted out or But it's open to the taxpayer. Not if you got a cat. It is if there's a spot, yes. If there's a spot, but what I'm saying is there should always be a spot. We're overloaded because we're keeping them past the five days that's in our ordinance. Well, I know, but... It, I think what he's saying is that... Humane Society is going to take over. They need their own location because it's not working for the taxpayer's spot. And they need to have an open. What well, is working for the taxpayer spot because we are saving the taxpayer a lot of money. But at the same time, we're not serving them. But I think the worry about is eventually it's going to snowball to where yeah. you, you're going to. Well, the problem was it was snowballing before we before we took care of it. We were our expenses were so high, and they were bringing people were bringing in animals and dropping them off. And expecting the taxpayer to pay for it instead of but we were keeping them way beyond the yes, we, we 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 addressed all those issues that you're talking about yeah we did as far as personal animals being put to sleep and animals being dropped off and that should be taken care of and those are taken my care point of. is that that part of the problem is that we arise from using too much money for the taxpayers was the fact those animals were staying at the shelter too long there was a group of cats i treated three times the county spent over five hundred dollars and I wanted to put every one of them to sleep. But they shouldn't have been there past five days. They would have never got sick and they would have never got billed. I had a dog that was out there nine days. He spent $109 at my clinic treating that dog. The dog shouldn't have been there to treat. He should have been already gone after five days. See, my point is, if you use it as a no-kill shelter, you're gonna to have to put people on waiting list. Yeah. Now, I don't know that the taxpayers expected that when they spent their money to build that shelter. You shouldn't have to be on a waiting list or an animal control facility. 
maybe an Oak Hill shelter. But you see my point? I see your point, but I also see the point that we're saving money for taxpayers because we haven't had a vet bill in over four months almost. Yeah, buddy. Well, I guess I need to yeah. retire. Nobody needs me anymore. Yeah. I mean, but my, but my point is, you you know, what are the, what is happening with these animals? Who, who's their 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 out? Yeah, but, and and but what my point is, well, I can't get that point. I, 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 how long how long do they stay in there? there? Let's, I mean, we we the word that says five days. How, five long days. Does, how long do they keep them in there after they have moved them to that uh, humane society takes them? I have no idea. Do you, Jason? I mean, it just depends on the animal. They're shipping them out pretty quick. I mean, Kevin had some. But we're not responsible for five days. Kid, do you want? I mean. No, but I understand, Mr. Sinclair. Do you want to explain? Yeah, I mean, if you got a service for the public, you can't utilize it because if it's five days, he's at the animal shelter every day if he wants to explain. If it's five days, it comes up through the great few find out the East Coast Transport, I got people in Michigan, I got 17 that are British of California, that they're contacting. I'm not contacting them. Every few letter of Tuesday and every third day, we have transporters coming in. I had four dogs go out yesterday, and I got another five more going out the farm. Nine dogs. Right now, I'm on seven empty kennels. I'll take it in today, six of it, nine cats today. We're still taking in cats. What happened is, Dr. Floyd, what he said is correct. We do have a list, a lot of counties, and I'm not the one that adapted this, but if you go back and start watching what the main society of shelters, they have a thing called managed intake. And a lot of people are actually saying, hey, you know, they're, they're pretty much fostered before they come in. Like I said, this is not me, this is what this is they're doing, and it's working for us. We've had nobody come in there and throw a fit, nobody complaining. So yeah, obviously, we, yeah. And my bill is cut down to nothing, and I mean, I'm sorry, I don't like bringing in bills, but I hear anything about it. You know, how many how many uh, days does the Humane Society leave it in the shelter? What's the longest they've ever left it in the shelter? Okay, between seven days, most of them are out. That's pretty much the top seven days. Yeah, between usually seven days, it, it's pretty quick. I mean, I'm actually surprised myself because I have seen some some dogs there prior before the people. They've been there three or four months. I saw that. We've had them through. Right four now, months. they're getting out quicker than. I've ever seen them get out because as soon as one comes in, they're posted on Facebook and the rest of you that are on Facebook are seeing them right off the bat. And like today, I, I can show you text messages from out of Rhode Island that are already committed from the ones that, that come in today. But I mean, that's how quick we're going out. The benefit on the remains that we're getting they're donations helping. and stuff. They're, and, and they're taking, okay, where we would take a dog and put it down, they're taking that dog and they're shipping it off because in five days we're you know we're putting the dog down or something so we incur the bill where they take it off and they adopt that dog out somewhere and if we did it we would have to hold on to it longer feed it or they they feed it it just after five days our hands are now there, there might be a disease thing i'm not going to sit there because he's a doctor he knows i'm just looking at it from a financial standpoint right now well, I would think three or four months is just unacceptable. That, that would be. And I don't think that's happening. But well, in, no, the past, that's that's problem, in the past, problem. it's happened, and that's why we've had the problems with that. Well, if you if you consider the overall animal control issue, and I know that these animals can get out. What I'm saying is, these rescues can still get these animals out. But you know, my point of addressing is the cats. Now, you guys may consider cats second-class pets. I don't. I think they should have the same rights. They're not included in the same ordinances by the state level, but they are in our ordinance. So you can't go and say, well, the state doesn't even, we don't have to do anything to say. Well, that's got nothing to do with it because they're in our ordinance just like that. And when I have clients approach me about not being able to take cats to the shelter that they need to get rid of, and the reason is because someone's decided that they can no longer take any because they haven't been able to move the ones that they've got out there, then we need to address that issue. Those taxpayers, are being denied access to their facility. Yeah, the, Pure and simple. At least the cats clients, stay longer than the dog, normally the dogs do. It's hard to get cats out to shelters, and it's hard to get them out of the rescue. These clients that's approaching here, are they stray cats, or are they, they cats? Yeah, cats a lot of them are stray older. cats. Not, most of them are not only cats. Most of them just, you know, if you're around, you're going to have cats come around, you know, uh, uh, and, and they're just, and a lot of, and, and some of these are old people, older people that have these stray cats come up that they can't, take care of. 
And I said, what? Well, I can't get them to take it to the shelter. What am I supposed to do? Now, now I've got a history, guys. I, I took animals in. I was president of the Humane Society of Ohio County for 15 years by myself. And Dr. Ard, when he was here, he and I both took animals into our clinics and took care of them before we ever built the first shelter. Okay? So I've been doing this for 39 years. Okay? But what I'm saying at this point in time is we need to make some adjustments in making sure that the taxpayer's facility is open to the taxpayer and that it's run by the people. Now, if you want to get a contract with them, hey, that's your business. But right now we don't have one. And I called out there and was not allowed to talk to the animal control officer. And that, should, that shouldn't happen. But we did allow them to go in there and help run because the, the man numbers were down and we wanted to see before we ever went into contract, is this going to work? Go ahead. At the time of the call, I wasn't pregnant. So I wasn't there. I mean, if I, if I was there, boy, you know, I'd talk to you. I never that wasn't my point. The lady that answered the phone. I told her I wasn't calling her, I was calling the animal control officer. When she answered, that was the uh, well, I County Humane Society. Uh, and I finally told her that I wasn't talking to her, she wasn't in charge. So. 2566611 will get it. Well, I said my piece, yeah, I should take it for work. Well, so here's the thing, then. If, I, I want you guys to feel feel safe on this. Uh, if you want to call the, the animal control, uh, if you want to call the shelter, if you want to talk to the animal control officer, Talk to them. We'll hold this off. If you want to talk to the C finances, look at that. But what we were done is we our job was to we were going over budget. Wait, and what, and what another thing to address in the ordinance is if I might have a dog instead of me wanting to put the dog down because it's my personal dog, they people would take them to the animal shelter and drop it off and expect the taxpayers to take care of their dog. And that we were incurring those expenses. And you're right. That, so, and we agreed in the committee. And we agreed that, that, to look at that too. That's and that's mainly what the ordinance is kind of stand for. Yeah, we don't have a contract with the. We just wanted to see because we were short people. We lost. We lost a, an employee. We actually lost three employees, didn't we? So these people have volunteered to help out because we lost three employees, and we've not had to hire the employees back because it's working financially. But let's hold off, let you guys look at the numbers. We'll look at it again next month. We'll look at it. Miranda, would you give me, I looked through my paper that we found the land control ordinance. Would you care to send you one? Send me one. Does any of the rest of you not have one? Larry, did you get one? No. You got one there? Hey, guys, call me if you have any questions. I'll, I'll answer the. If the Humane Society is coming up good on uh, donations and everything, would it, would it be a feasible thing? our old shelter which I believe is just sitting there we allow them to use it they, they pay the utilities and everything and after five days those animals move down to the old shelter and that way it keeps facilities open at the new shelter is that a possibility I know you're talking about an extra utility bill but I mean if the main society is coming up with all these extra donations maybe that's a plausible thing because what I'm afraid is is if you're if it ends up where our outtake is less than what our intake is, and we're not able to take these in, the next thing they'll be coming in saying, hey, we need to build more kennels. We need to build I more understand more that more. And then you're going to end up at expense later. And we'll that's, a, that's an option later on, I think. We'll hold it off and we'll discuss but the next uh, meeting. And, and I have the Advocacy Committee to meet again between now and then. And Justin's going to meet with the, the Society. And the reason we brought the Humane Society into, I like to say, is because they they were being left out. Actually, they were told they this lady that does the Ohio County Humane Society wasn't even allowed in our building. And we went out there and addressed that, and now she can come in our building. And they were running some of our volunteers off. And anybody knows you have to have volunteers to run the animal shelter. Good. So, well, I've got. To what I was asked to prepare, I, Matt's reviewing it. He says he's okay. Um, I have not talked to the Humane Society as far as what their position was after they reviewed it. Of course, if you want to see it at all, you can come by the office. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll email that to you guys once everybody tells me they're fine with it. Okay, uh, let's uh, thank you.
Dr. St. Clair. We will take all this into consideration. Let's move on here. Uh, Jason, could you come around down here on this end, stand behind Larry for his next item of business? I don't know. What's Larry? This one. Larry, uh, we have the next thing is a triaxle dump truck bid. We only have one treating this bid on the on the agenda, and Larry's fixing to open and read it. Joe, you don't trust me, or uh, Joe, you won't come down to me? No, it's all right. I'm going to let y'all go along. I get you my glasses on. I need a letter Hey, it's ceremony, Larry. If something goes bad, Sam, is this a deal on the back of that money? Yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. You remember what the, where's Angela? She left. She left? What was last year's uh, bid on it? 134 or something. I thought it was 140, 140, but the, uh, we'll according to these specs, it's $151,188. That is an increase, about 10 grand. Do you remember what it was last year? Well, two years ago it was 134, and they said hey, they were going to 140. Uh, just a quick question before you take off. Uh, what was the uh, bid on the back trucks last year? 141? Two of them were. Two hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred dollars. So. Two hundred fifty thousand a piece. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's not, not much. It's not, not much, much increase. So. Fifty-one nine eighty-eight. What did we want to advertise for? Be a judge. Is that what you want? It already been advertised. Oh, okay. So this is that's a district sale. That's the only yeah. one we got. That's yeah. the only one we got. That's it. And it's not surprising. Where was that one from? Worldwide equipment. Same one we've always dealt with. I one, thought one year we went. One time we had a bid from another one, so we ended up worldwide. <coughs> now, Lexi, Larry, on those right there, do they have Allison transmissions or they got the Mac transmissions? Did we run into that? That's a good question. Uh, you know, yeah. this past year, they made a big difference they on resale. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Absolutely. Uh, now, we got a transmission last year that I don't think the sale is good and it'll. It'll show itself here when they have the, the, the auction. I can't get the already sold. I believe it last year. Uh, I don't believe we have a M1. Well, we need to now. look at we need to look at the ones we're taking off this time. See how they. Heard the attack specs. Okay, transmission. The Allison 4500. Okay. 60. That's a good transmission. Yeah, that's a Allison. Do I hear a motion to accept that bid since it's only one? Make a motion. Yeah, a motion by Joe Barnes. And, and that's okay if Joe put in the right check for it, right? Oh, yeah. Still here a second? Second. Second, but I can't. Further discussion? Yeah. Being none, go ahead and uh, roll call. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, as you know, we've been always consistently out looking for or trying to get money from the governor's road fund. And uh, we were successful on uh, 19 school road as a third try. Uh, I first went for uh, Beta. They said it was too good. We got well, one we in Larry District and they said it was too bad. And we went for Vita because they were supposed to yeah, take right. care of us. Right. And that so, was right. And then one reason why they agreed with this money. Schultz down, they said it was too bad. And then we got to come 19 school road, they said it was just right. So uh, we, I don't think y'all interested in turning down the state's money for any road to black top. So, uh, That's exactly right. So, uh, Joe. I'd like to make a, entertain a motion to pass the resolutions for the Governor's discretionary fund to be used to blacktop 19 school road and to authorize judge executive to sign all contracts to do so it's a hundred and ninety thousand six hundred and ninety three dollars I'll second it. Motion by Joe Barnes second by Larry Morphy. Is there any further discussion? Being none, roll call. Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Did they have any uh, specs on that as far as how thick and everything? The black top judge? Uh, 
Yeah, we did, but I can't quote it to you right now. It's on the body of the that we turned in today. I'd like to get a copy of this. This Scotty's black copy in Ohio County. No, not at this moment. That's the same where they put up the signs on the state route 54. I'd like to get a copy of it. Can we email it to you, or if, you, yeah. or if not, then get it before you leave tonight? It don't matter. I believe it's an inch and a half, but don't, I don't want to quote that. I don't want my Normally, it, 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 it is, but that center section there where it was real thin black top, I didn't know. If they come to the two. last 
How long has this been going on, the state building that bridge on that road? 20, 20 it was in our last, it was last one was going on. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the being being before I got here, <coughs> the being committee's done viewed and the roads as good as 600 feet. Not to put a form of motion. So who seconded it? Sam. Sam seconded it. Uh, my only question is how many houses are we picking up when we bring in 600 feet? One. One. Potential more lighter. But, uh, but that's a short distance. How many people would pass that 600? Not nobody. No. It's a, but that's that's a tenth, less than a, that's a tenth. Yeah, he lives last year. He did. Yeah, only one person. Is it, it's the, one of those state tra tra trade off roads, isn't yes. it? The state? Yes, it is. The so, million dollar bridge after the state did fine. Yeah. Yes, we could at least take it in. Yeah. So go ahead and roll call that. Uh, Cam? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've had the Animal Control Committee report tonight. Uh, I think there was another committee meeting t tonight. I would like to hear a uh, report. Some of the committee has left, but I'd like to hear a report from that committee. We just had a smoke-free committee meeting. Good group of people in there, and we are going to meet again at 4 o'clock for the next meeting. We just kind of took the old ordinance that they had had. We just kind of took it out. I think it's it was there in the last court. Kind of dusted off, went through it, and looked at some things that we might look over and change that were brought up to our last court meeting that some of the matters that they talked about. The front door space was one of them, right? But there was front door space, yeah, uh, private residence, which in that ordinance, private residence is excluded. So you can have a business in your private residence that's excluded, um, I mean, it's unless it's a health-related business or child care business. You know, so if you had a shop, uh, like a beauty shop or a, a, a garage that was connected to your house and it was a private business, that you're, you're not in the, in the, uh, uh, or an engineering fire. Yeah, but private business is taken up. The only thing the private business, like a private house would do, like I said, if it's health related or child care related. And then we looked at the uh, 25 feet away from the door and looked at a reasonable amount. Uh, distance. Uh, if I may ask a couple of questions. Jason. First of all, have you got anybody on your committee that uh, uh, that is a smoker that uh, has his chance to put an input into it? Or we owner? don't. But what I tell you, what we did do. Well, I didn't. No, I mean, there's nobody on there. There's not. No, there's no, not. There's somebody there's from no, the hospital. No debate or anything like that. Somebody can help the part. But and what we're doing is just looking at it right now. It's kind of. We did, uh, OC Monitor just put a poll, so if you're listening, uh, OC Monitor put a poll, uh, if you're for or against, to kind of get an idea of what the public's thinking yeah, but about. I, I think you need to explain that really well, because, you know, if any statistics, it could be turned one way or the other. If you just ask the person, hey, do you want a smoke-free business, mm -hmm. the ones that you go into, they'd say yes. Mm -hmm. But then ask them, how many businesses do you go into that is not smoke free. Well, most of them are smoke free. So, you know, the, where I'm at it on, it just seems well, like it's I guess over governing. That's, I guess that's my question is, I would, if I, I don't make make into a, this problem. If I was going to make an educated guess, I'd say 80 or 90 percent of the businesses in Ohio County are smoke free. Yeah, that's quite like hard, man. And I, and I don't mind that. So what, what, what are we trying to accomplish here? Well, my problem, which is, and I might be wrong, but I'm, this gentleman that was here before, did he not say that there's just five of the 120 counties that's passed something like this? Why that's would right. we want to be one of the five? Or one to six, so it, so it, it, it would make us so we're not last. <laughs> make yeah. us look what now? progressive. Yeah, but it would and help me and kept conscious. So it helps us go by overbearing. I think it makes us look like government's kind of. Well, I well, guess personally, like the gas stations that people smoke in, mm -hmm. I won't go into those. If, and that, if, and that if should, they've previously sir, smoked in any restaurants, I won't go into there, I understand that, but there's not a restaurant in any of them that I know of that's not still free. There's a couple of little uh, delis in convenience stores, but yeah. that's all. And every business, basically, and I don't know about the Ports of Honor, you might know more about that. But it's smoke-free. I know one <coughs> one business I did, they finally went smoke-free, and they said their business is better. And, and I'm not saying 
yay for smoking, not for smoking. If you want to publicly, if you want to smoke, that is your right to smoke. That's fine. Well, we're just looking at looking at this. We're going to present it to you. Let you guys look over it. It's, it's yes or no. And we might present it. We might not. But we are looking into it. You remember Ben Chandler who was here? He had explained that pretty good too. Well, I've never Best smoked in my life, life, Larry. And but I, when I go out here, I don't see the problem, and I don't see hey, no smoking signs on the. On the, but a lot of them just courteous enough that they don't come in there yeah, right. and, and fire it up while well, you're in that business. Well, let me give you. A and prime I hate example. to be overbearing on those. Let me give you a prime example. Here in the county, in the courthouses and everywhere else, there's, there, we don't have a smoke ordinance as far as the government buildings. We don't have one. But and I'm on board for that because people have to we go into those buildings, and I understand that perfectly. But I do think when when we as government dictate to an individual that's on Paul station or whatever the case may be, garage, car shop, whatever the case may be, that we dictate to him he has to go 25 feet from his front door out in the weather to smoke. I think it's an overreaction well, of government. And then my other problem is, is we create a law that we're already about by. So well, hey, what's the point? Like Jason said, back to what Jason said, he said probably more than 90% of the businesses in Ohio County are smoking. I was but, thinking but in, as far as the monitor, did you get? How, many, how much feedback did you guys They just put it up today. We, and there's what? About a, there was a hundred and last time I looked, it was 137 votes and it was 70 34 for comprehensive. Yeah, and, but if I may ask you guys, how was that worded? I tried to find that out for man how when Jason and M had the committee and, and they done their survey. I wanted to, <coughs> I wanted how the. I had to pull it up here. Uh, so but I made sure to put in there a comprehensive smoking ordinance meaning no smoking in public buildings, restaurants, businesses, et cetera. Basically, you know, public buildings are public buildings that the public go into. It's now 71 to 29%. How's it worded? No, 71, yes. Read it to them. It says the county smoke-free committee is working on a comprehensive smoke ordinance at this, at this moment. Oops, hold on. I picked up the Citizen of Ohio County, are you in favor of a smoking ban in public places, restaurants, businesses, parks, government facilities, etc.? And then you can mark either yes or no. 139 votes. It was put up two hours ago. 71 percent say yes. And I so that's. Yeah. I want to kind of get make sure people understood what it was going to be. It was going to be uh, restaurants, be that parks, facilities, yeah. stuff like and, that. And I don't want you guys to misunderstand me. I'm not pro smoking. I don't smoke myself, but but I just believe that uh, sometimes it's an overreach by government to tell an individual that he can't smoke smoke in his own place. Yeah, and I wish everybody realized that was voting on that. That if they passed the ordinance that's presented right now. It means that it would affect people that have run businesses out of their own homes and stuff. No, like it that. doesn't affect them because if they run a business out of their own home, they they're exempt from this. Some people might say, "I don't want to wear a seatbelt when I'm driving down the road." But I get a, I get fined if I don't wear a seatbelt running down the road. Well, and it's not that it, the thing about it is smoking. It's not that I do things that are unhealthy for me. And and, and well, if sure. you want to smoke, smoke. It's it's the fact. It, it, well, it, it, it goes on to, you'll change your mind. But it goes on to somebody else. Let me ask you this, Jason, and I brought this point up last time. The number one of cause of type two diabetes mm -hmm. is sugar, folks. Yeah. And do, do does government finally come to a point and say, well, now listen, we need to ban those because you know, in some places yeah, they I are. Don't some places. I don't die when you drink a coke. Yeah. You know, but your choice. They could. Well, but unless you took the coke. If you have on. a diabetic coma, what? Because you're not biting by your health. No, and no, you're she's saying. I'm just she's saying. saying that if I'm drinking a coke, so it doesn't it's affect her. If I'm smoking a cigarette, oh, it affects her. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm well, sitting right here and he's drinking a coke, do you know what I'm saying? But we both, we, all, we all got poor habits, and uh, and smoking is one, and I have smoked, and, uh, but it's probably the one. We're just looking at it. We're going to present it to you. We're not saying it. Well, I've read because I was put on the committee to look into it. The poll that so, they have on there, they posted it on the website. Yeah. And and at one time when everybody spoke, <coughs> it didn't bother me. But now I don't want to be around it at all. Well, good time. It did I just think it would be progressive in most counties. 
usually do, or cities do, are, you know, and yeah. kind of, no, it's it's healthy, you, if you look at economic, economic benefits of it too, health related, you know. You're, you're looking out for future generations. Well, I mean. But they just put a 50%, 50 cents tax on cigarettes, and their <coughs> argument is that if people would deter or tail them from smoking, that's not no, There's happen. people that would rather get cigarettes than pay their light bill. I'm well, sure, sorry. that's exactly right. But it shows you the point I made last week, or two weeks ago, how addictive cigarettes are. Well, they are. And if they, I would say that a good percentage, and the monitor could put this on there, that were, if you could quit smoking without the withdrawal from cigarettes, would you quit smoking? And I'll bet you'd have 95% of A lot of people quit with the withdrawal, so. <laughs> I mean, I, when I quit, uh, when I quit, uh, it was three weeks, and I'm not going to be around for three weeks. I mean, it really does make you. Our hurt. father tried several times, and those were three weeks we didn't want to figure yeah. out of it. But eventually. Uh, they they any up. other committee reports? Well, basically, we're just dusting it off. We're looking over the end. We'll look and let you look at it up and, and just review it. And I warn you, are probably going to get smoked out because we're going to probably bring them for a vote next May. So then everybody will know who's for it and who's against it. Oh, I would know that. But anyway, if you're in question of how the poll's going, you can go there, Facebook page, or our fiscal port one. I've reposted it on there too. Let's see what the public wants. Uh, are you going to give your little baby coats when it's little? No. I wish I quit coats. <laughs> now, Grandma and Grandpa might sneak uh -huh. for a few, but do you know Mom and Dad won't be. No, I just try to be humorous. We could pass a law and then they wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, it should be a law right, that, that you cannot, uh, your parents or grandparents cannot give coats to their little children. Yeah, yeah. that'll be the next thing. Hey, right, I, let's I, move I, on. Hey, I think we're getting off track. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So let's move on. Any other committee report? I, I think we're being progressive. Being none. <laughs> Old Magistrate, Sam Small. I have nothing to do. Jason. No. Joe. Yeah, I have two things I asked you about on before the meeting, but just to recap. Flex fund money, you're thinking of be probably late September or October? No. Something. Surely it'll be here, but I, no. I hit them up in local last week. No. They are, they are working on all the RS in every county. Every county's flex, fold, flex funds are on hold right now, and they will be for the next few months until they get everything else taken care of. Uh, like frozen. I've talked to them and they're, they're, I'm, we're going to get all the judges just hammering them. They're going to get on. Yeah, because if they wait a couple months, we won't be able to buy it. We're not even doing it at all. People are working up there. They are no longer there. They've kind of cleared house. So. Okay. And then Ann's not here, but yeah. Cole Severance money on our getting our uh, road money. It, That's it's pretty good. Try. I think you can act as big PO now. Yeah. It can be PO now. I believe so. Yeah. We've got it far you enough where they've yes. approved it that it's not going to be an issue. Right. They right. proved it's all pay for ten last time. Yeah. I yeah. That's for the house bill. Okay. Anything else? Okay. No. Uh, Larry. Yeah. One. I just want to bring up one uh, little small issue. I want to thank the road department for. Uh, it's middle of August and we finally got the first morning. <coughs> and that's better than it was last year because it's the middle of September. But one point I'd like to make is that uh, if we could rotate this every year, the mowing, you know, or to the fourth next year, the fifth, and you know, on around, I wonder if they wouldn't be quicker to get the job done. Well now, Larry, the only thing I will say, there's, there was just some roads that just finished up in mine that was the first mowing, and then I got some reports that some didn't get done, so I don't know. So I, I, I think they kind of, or something that did, yeah. You know, some of it could have been where they went from one district to another and it got, but I mean, I had a few that, I'm, I'm I trying. know a couple of years got missed, but you we've got you know more left than I've got. But uh, now, there's, I really think next we year we're going to have to do, I think we're going to have to put more tractors out there. We're going to have get to. get it done in a time. But the ones that's been to the Roadmaster classes, and I know Jason was in the spray course with me, mm -hmm. we need to look into the spraying early in the spring that knocks out all the Johnson grass the and Johnson all the grass horse weeds. Easy. Because I talked to one road barn that, for the state. They sprayed real early spring, and they've only done one mowing, and they've had no complaints. It's just, it's just you know, less than need high grass. 
I, and what I get all the complaints on is the six foot tall Johnson grass, yeah. horse weeds that's falling out of the road. And, and I know the where they've already mowed the Johnson grass. And of course, it's, you can cut Johnson grass three times a year if you want to for hay. You can cut it, you can cut it four or five because yeah. the, some places where they mowed two weeks ago with the rain and the weather we've had, sure. it's already four foot tall. But I think it's something. Bidding it out for mowing? We did that. We did that. that. I, I know that, but maybe like district. We uh, we yeah. spray we're spraying now. But we might need to look at bending out this spraying. Now, we just now starting to spray. We should have been done early on. I know that. Uh, I think we didn't start spraying early enough. They are now, but that's kind of like the game. And Sam brought up the chemical that you know kills the Johnson grass. And then while we was in those those courses, there the state is mixed in like three different chemicals with it early on in the spring. That's taking care of all your weeds, all your weeds, broadband, you know, broad leaf weeds and the Johnson grass and they're not dealing with them the whole season. And I, that's going to, that was going to change us dramatically if we could get that done. I they said Timberline. You said Fusion, but they weren't using Timberline. Well, they don't, you can't get Fusion anymore. They can't get they Fusion, say. yeah. Timberline. Joe, I do believe that if we did the spring, it would probably in the long run save us an enormous amount of money with more. They said it was about a fourth of the cost, I believe what I, they said. I would say you're correct. Because one man in one truck can spray what three passes would be with the mold. Oh, no, it's not. The only thing we have to watch is being courteous to where we spray and what we spray. Well, we could use our mowers down you know, in the city, around the city and things of that nature down here in Hartford, Beaver Dam. But when we got out in the rural areas, I think so. Well, and we, really keep in mind, to, we really need to focus on that before the And keep in mind mentioned. for the public, because you know a lot of people think, well, if you're gonna spray it, you're gonna kill it to the you know, dead and brown. Now it just kills the weeds early on and you're still gonna have your green grass yeah. that you know will get up about knee high and you'll have to mow it once, but that'll keep the erosion from yeah. on the side of the If road. it kills the grass, then erosion starts. Right. right. So yeah, we, we need really to we need to implement that next year. Why don't uh, David, if you don't care, won't you put together a committee and uh, Sam and Joe, and uh, yeah. see if they'll look into it. Def definitely want to do that as far as the guys on the, on the Roadmasters program to put down together the recommendations with what we spray with. But the bottom line is we got to start spraying early. We got to keep on doing it. Like I said, we are doing it now, but it's an awfully late start. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. Larry. When, uh, when do you think uh, Scott is going to be here to do our uh, roads? Uh, I don't know, but I'm contact them again. Do you think it would be that possible that they would go on and do our flex roads and we pay them when we get our money? Uh, would, uh, I think it is, but we'll, we'll discuss it. I'm going to get a better handle on when we're going to get it and then see if they will. Because for already here, I know a couple of mines together. Some of the same roads. Yeah. Some of the same roads. And, uh, <coughs> if they would do that, they, they wouldn't have to come back. And, I, and yeah, uh, I'm going to tell you something too. Uh, we, like I said, we keep getting money from the governor's discretionary money. We just signed a contract on Chick Road. Now we've done 19 schools. Uh, another one that's high on my agenda is this uh, new cut road into that shoulder up there. Because believe it or not, for a mile black top there, it'll take in more people than, as well as taking in the shoulder, it takes in more houses in that length of black top than anywhere else we could go. What was it? I got a, I got a quote from Scotty. What the deal? Okay. You know how much that was, baby? Eighty-two thousand. That was back. That was back. It was better than basketball. Oh, that's uh, so. And uh, uh, and I think it was two and a half inches. And I put my block of money for that district is in that fund, so I don't have to find it all. But I'm keeping digging. You also get it from the state. Well, the state and I'm not giving up on Purdue, maybe putting some in. People like Farm Bureau and all those organizations too. The American Poultry Federation is the right name. And, and everywhere we can, we've got to get to do that. That's all I got. Okay, Justin. No. No. Anybody in the public got anything for you as a body? No, they don't. So, let's go to Justin. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. He said three times.